around was old Ma Peggotty's place. It was like taking bread to top of the world. And afterwards, I knew Baker had had kettle on and doorsteps of hot hobies ready. That's whole meal hobies, he'd say. Get it inside you, lad. Does you good, that hill, says he. I've never seen an appetite like it. Hovis, it's as good today as it's always been. How do you pep up a pizza? Make room for the mushrooms. Make room for the mushrooms. Relibald. Sir. What? Sir. What? Sir. What? Sit. Ow. What was that? That was what, sir? What was what? What was? What's what's it, sir? What? Sir. What? What's a what's it? What? Oh, what? What's it? Cheesy, that's what, sir. What is what wickering about, Waffle? I'm not What? Give it to me, sir. <laughs> Gold and wonder what's it when you know what's what. What? Sir? Our latest movie at 11.25 tonight provides the comedy SOB starring Julie Andrews. But now, Menace on Scene. Robert Shriving is mysteriously executed at his computer. His partner, Duncan Free, investigates. He is aided by Robert's widow, Tessa, with whom Duncan once had an affair. He discovers hidden discs. Mark Halstrom, helping to decode these discs, is attacked and the information stolen. Enigmatic Larry Knight says that Robert was involved in high-level computer crime, and he warns Duncan to drop his investigation. Sleep. Get nagging at me. What if you were right? Yeah, unfortunately, I was. You know, they didn't just take the discs. Nothing so obvious as that. They simply wiped everything on them. I don't know what to say, Duncan. So how's your memory? Is that all we got to go on? Those are all the names I remember. You sure of these? Oh. The first one I'm sure of because it's kind of different. Not Simmons. Definitely Simmonson. Tressida? Yeah, I'm pretty sure about that one. And this one. Coningsby. Might be Coningsby. Might be Collison. It was definitely CO something. Coniston. Coniston, that's it. One of Robert's clients. Superconductor technology. Oh, listen, do you have anything on that, by the way? I badly need some information on it if I'm going to keep him as a client. SCT, the most important development since the wheel. Uh, hey, you're getting involved, and that's pretty deep. Do I have a choice? Why is this name stuck out on the side like a dog's hind leg? Lang? Well, that's just the way it appeared, like it was in a different category or something. Uh-huh. Listen, are you going to have to report this breaking? Nah, nothing else was touched. How did they do it? Well, they paid off our security for a start. But Duncan, whoever did this must be really big. They have got some serious power. So how's the hip today? 
Not too bad, I hope. Worse. Uh, doesn't like this weather. <laughs> Who does? <laughs> My name is Simonson. I was here a few days ago, but I didn't get to see anyone. I have written, so no answer. Not even an acknowledgement. I was wondering if it was my fault. <laughs> because, you see, I'm, I'm not really very good at this sort of thing. Duncan. Which job are you on? I mean, it is for the firm, floor mainstay. I know you've been under some strain. And I may have a nerve saying this, but yourself and not here lately, some of us are starting to worry. Really, no cause to. Whatever I do, I do for the firm. However, indirectly. Now, you may not have noticed this, but I am fighting for our survival. conservation of energy. Power cables needing a fraction of the current because they won't burn up any heat. pocket size engines with enormous power. Fuel bills going through the floor. That's what superconductivity will bring. And the key to all this is ceramics. So the race is on. Are we in with a chance? Oh, uh, it's a usual story. Our research is as far ahead as anyone's except perhaps the Japanese. And then suddenly government funding falls through. That old family failing, British myopia. And so we fell rather badly behind. So your company stepped in with a neat blend of patriotism and self-interest. Yeah. Sounds as if superconductivity is going to be the greatest thing since the invention of the wheel. Certainly, since the invention of the transistor. Your computers will work a hundred times as fast. Just think of the gain in information. Yeah. As I notice, you maintain pretty high security around here. Yes, well, uh, whatever we find, we intend to keep it to ourselves. So, what have your own researchers turned up for us? Now, we had thought that the most advanced were the Japanese and IBM and Zurich, but look who's come out in front. Where did you get this information? I just got the computer to analyze the data you gave us. <laughs> okay. I also did some slightly questionable hacking. And I have my own contacts here and abroad. I thought you'd be used to acquiring information in this way. You see, I want to give you exactly the same service that, uh, that Robert gave you. And why not? Except it's a tough business. My people are today's people. Exploitative, pragmatic, no value judgments. I've only got one worry. Really? Yes. Somebody's been bugging my office. My telephones are tapped. I'm frequently followed, my car's tailors. 
It's very distracting. Now, who would want to do that? Exactly. Exactly. And I'm sure I could work very much better if, uh, if somebody had got them off my back. <laughs> That's not at all like you. Nostalgia, nothing. Perfectly realistic. London was cleaner. People actually cared about other people. Which you must admit has quite gone out. What else has gone wrong since you and London were purer? <laughs> I didn't say that, dear. I was on the stage. I don't know. There's brutality in the air. Throats are there for cutting. There are sharp knives around to do it. You think Robert was killed? No one suggested that. Who would want to kill him? Do you know what Robert used to say to me these last few months? DTA, love, DTA. Don't trust anybody. Oh, that's a bit bleak, isn't it? But what if he was right? For instance, your clever computer friend. Oh, Mark. How do you know you can trust him? What if he erased the material on those discs? Making a copy first, of course. No, no Mark's just not made that way. Can you be sure? No, I know him. You thought you knew my husband. to fascinate me, a mix of the very old and the very new. Now I begin to wonder what really goes on behind those nice, shiny facades. You have already won a video recorder, a run of five, five thousand pounds in cash, or a crystal goblet.
Oh, hello. Uh, my name's Duncan Free. Oh. Here you come, Mr. Free. You won't follow, dear, will you? Um, hard to tell. I'm, I'm, I'm just an amateur. Is this you? Yes, I'm Cordelia. But it was my friend scribbled the note. Gail! Up you go, then, dear. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, but am I here for a massage? Oh, well, it should look like that, shouldn't it, dear? I, I don't know your name. Gail. Gail Greville. Oh, you call the office? Yes. You knew Robert? I was his girl. Oh. <laughs> Thought I knew that now. So, what happens now? You get undressed. When I was in my teens, I had a row with my parents. I'd run away to London, of course. I stayed a while with a friend. She was in with a pretty wild bunch. Diplomats, up-and-coming politicians, young stockbrokers, solicitors. In those days, everyone slept with everyone. People weren't afraid like they are now. Nice while it lasted, though, not it? I got caught up with this man on the way up to Whitehall. He just used people. Girls, that is. I ended up hating him. Finally, I managed to walk out on him. Three months later, he pops up again. Someone else they needed some information on. I was on my own, no job, needed the money, I said yes. Soon I was working for them all the time. Is that how you met Robert? He was doing some kind of undercover work for them. They had nothing on him, you understand. Just they liked to keep tabs on everybody, just in case. Trouble was, Robert and I sort of fell in love. Would you turn over now, please? Do I have to? I won't look. <sighs> Do you mean that about uh, being in love? Robert was a gentle, sweet man. He got himself involved for something too nasty for him to cope with. I'm sure he loved his wife. He he just couldn't bring himself to tell her how crooked he was getting. And I was well. I was exactly what he needed at the time. Do you believe he killed himself? Robert didn't kill himself. They murdered him. Tell me.
miles from country life, and you'll never put a better bit of butter on your knife. All right, right. Here's the door key, please. I haven't got it. You had it. Didn't. Gave it to you. You never give me anything. I'll give you something in a minute, I will. Look, if we can't eat in, we'll eat out. There's everything we need. Bread, jam, cheese, and lots of lovely country life butter. Oh, smashing. Now, what are we going to do about this door? Oh! <laughs> To take on Titchy Breakfast, you've got to keep neat. Right, lads? Yeah. Okay. That's why we've built this, the Wheat of X Assault Course. Now, you show me a Titchy Breakfast that could do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And still sing. You make it neat, wheat, mate. If you know what's good for you, the Wheat of X. Okay. This is Big Track, the computer-activated truck from MB Electronics. Program in up to 16 commands, and Big Track will advance, turn, and fire three blasts. Big Track follows its instructions and can maneuver around every obstacle to complete its mission. Program it, and Big Track obeys. Well done, Big Track. Big Track from MB Electronics. Hi, Norma. I heard you moved in. Nice to see you again. The circumstances could be happier. Yeah. Uh, where's Tessa? Uh, gone for a walk. Down at the river. Uh -huh. Tessa, someone's been talking to me. Something you should know. Who's been talking to you? Uh, a friend of Robert's. Which friend? What kind of friend? It was a young woman. Oh. What did she have to say? It's very difficult to tell you this, Tessa. I see. I'm not really surprised. I'm almost glad he had somebody through all that bad time. I failed him, didn't I? Oh, no, of course. Yes, I did. I did. What was happening? What was... The solicitor told me Robert had nearly half a million pounds in his account. Duncan! Some mad woman on the phone for you! Who is it? Says she's Cordelia. She's almost hysterical. It's about someone called Gail. <laughs> It's television, sir. And the films, all these crime stories, private citizens rushing around shooting off their guns. Bad examples. So what's wrong, Mr. Free? I think it's possible that Robert Shriving was murdered. 
see. What's given you that idea? There's a girl, a friend of Robert's. Now she's disappeared. I see. But who? Have you no idea? No. Mrs. Shriving gets her husband's body back today. Now, I assume that means the coroner's satisfied. It would suggest as much. Yes, but look at this, this forensic report. We haven't heard, have we? Hmm? And what did they find inside that burnt-out machine? Now, that comes under the heading of confidential. So it is a suspicious death. I'm not at liberty, I'm afraid, sir. Have you ever heard of a company called Sircon, run by a man called Conniston? Superintendent Frame, yes? Frame, I need to talk to you. I have someone with me, sir. Could I ring you back? Thank you. What evidence do you have, sir? Uh, not very much. I've got a list of names. Lang, Coniston, Simonson, Tressida. Hello, Rose Tressida. There's a call from Mr. Wickford. Mm. I don't know where Mr. Whitford is right now. You'd better put the call through to me. Okay, Miss Tressida. It's for Mr. Coniston. Hello? Mr. Coniston? Can you take a message, please? I am, as it happens, Mr. Whitford's personal assistant, not his secretary. Where she is, I don't know either, but yes, I can take a message. It shouldn't overtax you. Just tell him I called. No doubt he'll get back to me. You've got the name. Coniston. He has mentioned you. Not at all. Message for you. Rose? We need to talk. Well, the girl will be back any moment. I have to work when there's no one around. Look, I've decided I don't like using my skills like this. It's virtually a criminal activity. Oh, for God's sake. Everybody's doing it. Yes, well, I'm terrified that somebody will find out anyway I don't approve. People have a right to their privacy. The innocent have nothing to hide. Our information should have stayed exactly where it was, undisturbed in confidential files. Don't worry, Rose. I'll always protect you. Look, please, don't. I want to talk. You're not thinking of doing anything silly, are you? I don't know what you're suggesting. I'm suggesting that you remember the Official Secrets Act, which you signed when you joined us. You've forgotten. It was rather a long time ago. You expect everything from me, don't you? And what do I ever get in return? All your other women, girls, mean much more to you than I do. Hello? Oh, hello. Is that Miss Rose Tressida? Who is that? Uh, I tried your home number. Excuse me, you knew... Who was it, Rose? Wrong number. Who was it, Rose? Simonson F, Simonson J, Simonson Dr. Grace. Hello, yes. Yes, this is he. Uh, I'm sorry to bother you. Do you know Robert Shriving? Oh, yes. Oh, good. Um, well, I'm an associate of his. Well, I did not worry about Mr. Shriving. But I hadn't heard from him for, oh, it must be over a week. I, I hope there's nothing wrong. You seem very, uh, very cosy here, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> really? Yes, well, I've never been rich. What teacher is? But to have to boil down what's left of one's life to, to one room. 
Mr. Simpson, I, I have to say, I don't quite understand your connection with Robert Shriving. I was working at a private school in one of those South American dictatorships, terrible government. Lovely people. Oh, yes. Lovely people. And though I say it myself, I, I was a good teacher <laughs> and so popular that the school head, who was a teacher himself, would you believe it, he was quite jealous. <laughs> at a Christmas party, when we were all a little merry, toasting the Queen, the local boss fella, and the principal. I, in my innocence, I suppose overcome with nostalgia and cheap wine, I proposed the toast of absent friends. There was a hush. And a friend of mine, one of the lady teachers, she, she jumped in with a bit of local gossip and uh, only after did she explain that absent friends was a kind of code for those who were taken away and locked up by the secret police. The disappear. Oh, yes, yes, that's what they were called in some countries. Mm. <laughs> the disappeared. Well, e even then I thought little of it, but the very next day, the security police took me in for questioning. And, uh, who uh, reported me, reported that remark? Well, yes, naturally, the school principal. What happened? Well, I was told to leave the country within 48 hours. I'd already decided to resign from the school, but there were other schools, and I really did love those people. I, I really did. Well, I, felt, I felt very bitter at having to leave. Hmm. But anyway, that, that was... Would, would you like some more sherry? No, that's fine, thank you. Yes, but that was only a beginning. In another country nearby, I found a teaching job, and everything was going along very nicely, when once again I was hauled in front of the local police chief, told I was an undesirable alien, and I had to leave immediately. Apparently, these countries share information. How many times did this happen? No, I don't know. I lost count. No, in the end, I decided I had enough of these uh, adventures. I came back to England. Merry England. <laughs> Tea and muffins and the rule of law. And the trouble was, I could never seem to find a job. Mm. I had a job when I first arrived. But then there was some sort of a shake-up, and after only a few weeks, I was told to leave. And then there were no jobs. <laughs> they always seemed impressed with my qualifications and my experience. But sooner or later, excuses were made, and... And you've no idea why? None whatsoever. I put it down to age, naturally. Too stuffy, new teaching techniques around. It must be just that I was out of date and they were too polite to say so. It, um, forgive me, Mr. Simmons, but how have you managed? Oh, oh my dear fellow. I've struggled to keep afloat for years. I must admit, there were times, and I'm, I'm not a melodramatic sort of chap, really, when I... I did actually consider, well, I mean, there seemed, to, there seemed to be no point going on. I mean, not a, a single human being had shown me even a morsel of respect and regard. And then uh, one night, a little over a month ago, did you, uh, did you have a biscuit? Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah. The telephone rang. A stranger, with such a, a pleasant, concerned manner. I mean, he had some facts which he felt I ought to know. It's your partner, Robert Shriving. In combing through some official computer files, he come across my name with various entries against it, none of them complimentary. My work record was there, the posts I'd been 
asked to leave. And he could track down all the latter parts of my life from those entries. And the conviction grew in him that I was an innocent victim. I was and am listed in certain files right here in England as a political troublemaker, uh, a critic of the status quo, a sort of <laughs> the, a dissident. You can't fight it, you know. Did he not tell you about the Data Protection Act? Oh, yes, yes, he, he told me about that. But, you see, every time I want to look up one of these files, I must pay a, a fee, and there are thousands of them. Anyway, never mind, your Mr. Shriving has done one good thing. He's given me back my self-esteem. I mean, I can die happily now in the knowledge that, well, my misfortunes do not stem from my own incompetence, but from some quirk of, well, no, not, not of fate, but of, of human error. Error, well, I wouldn't call it error, Mr. Simerson. I would call it injustice. Anyway, I'm, I'm very grateful to you. I'm very relieved. I've been having some grave doubts about my partner, but at least in this case, he seems to have been the man I'd always thought him to be. Oh, but I think not only in this case. No, I had the impression that he was on a personal crusade to stop this sort of thing happening. And to fight those responsible. You get back home quick as you can. Poppy, I can't just sit in your flat for the rest of my life. Stop worrying. You came to me for help. You became my responsibility. It's all right. How can they make any connection between you and me? We haven't been in touch for years. You won't be trying to see him again. That bloke. Duncan Free. Maybe in a while. Don't even consider it. Didn't I work for those people, too? Didn't we work together and see a lot of terrible things? Once they get their claws into you... The best thing you did was to cut out. Well... You be good for your auntie, Gail. And with the fruit, it tastes just right. So how do we feel now this morning? I am okay. Timothy shampoo is so mild, you can wash your hair as often as you wish. Containing natural herb extracts, Timothy always leaves your hair silky and shiny with the fresh smell of summer meadows. Timothy. So mild, you can wash your hair as often as you wish. Timothy. Tomorrow at 8, there's a brand new hour of the Benny Hill Show with a bevy of beautiful girls and Benny as Baracus of the Beatty. <laughs> A 
brand new Benny Hill Show. Top comedy and entertainment for the new year tomorrow at 8 on Thames. Comparatively painless. Gets to you there, doesn't it? Do you think Tessa's okay? Duncan, come down and visit at the weekend for lunch. Oh, what the hell are you doing here? Well, I'm charming. I was a friend of the deceased. You must be Mrs. Shriving's aunt. How would you know that? Well, this is Larry Knight. He knows everything. <laughs> Norma Trisk. I'm delighted. I'm sure you boys have things to discuss. So, still floundering about. No idea what to do. You're going to wait till someone else gets killed? Well, last time we talked, you thought Robert had committed suicide. Oh, it was a possibility. I half expected all along it would be something worse. Mm. I see. Now you decided that he was murdered. What did you say? Was he murdered? Is it true? Larry Knight. Yes, I'm afraid it is possible. How do you know? Who did it? Who could have wanted to? Tessa, this really is not the time. It seems to me my husband's funeral is a very good time to discuss my husband's death. Why does everyone know except me? Why didn't you tell me? I, it just would have upset you more. I, I couldn't see the point. The truth. I would have liked the truth. I'd have gone back to the police and made them We've cremated him. The body. The evidence. You have a bloody big mouth. You know that? And disappear. Just leave us alone. I can help you for God's sake. Work with me. Don't keep going it alone. You don't seem to grasp how little time you've got. They won't let you go on like this, blundering about, asking questions. Who are they? Who is he talking about? OK, Duncan, let's get it out in the open. Mrs. Shriving, let's, let's go to the car, shall we? Mrs. Shriving, try to imagine nothing so clear-cut as an organisation, but a sort of loose association of powerful companies. Powerful men who use private information on computer files to manipulate and damage people's lives. Why would anyone want to do this? Well, power. Government departments, local police, big companies, all use private information, computer files, full of details about us that we don't even know they've got. It's insidious. It's spreading. What kind of details? Medical records, tax problems, political leanings, even sexual tastes. Who knows what's being noted down and passed around, but just think of the leverage over people that it gives. You don't see the danger, do you? Well, it's got to be stopped. What has this to do with my husband? Robert was raiding computer files illegally, of course, and using the information to... well, to misappropriate money. Or to build up dossiers, confidential information for the use of his employers. Then why would they want to kill him? Well, it seems as though he was uh, beginning to be sickened by it all, so he turned against them. Told them he wanted to get out. Yes. It's true. What is going on? Someone has started to believe me at last. Cressida Lang.
To Tommy, it looked a very successful flight. Very successful. I confess, I'm absolutely chuffed. But what about the safety factor? Can you be absolutely Lionel? sure? It is Lionel, isn't it? I'm a great fan of local television. I know you all. I'm happy to tell you the new stabilizing element we fitted, and I'm giving our competitors no further details than that. Our new stabilizing element has improved both safety and performance, and I'm certain the reset I've been funding is now paying off, and my unshakable faith in our young British engineers is fully vindicated. Lady Mercy, how do you feel about Sir Tommy's experimental flights and daredevil image? I gave up being anxious about my husband's exploits many years ago. He takes very little notice of what I say anyway. Thank you, Lionel. Come on. And so we've shared in another typical, and it seems highly successful, caper of that magnificent extrovert millionaire, Sir Thomas, known universally and affectionately as Sir Tommy Lang. Cut it. Get the takeoff. Thank you, Lionel. Bye-bye. Thank you, Charlie. Bye. What's he like, really? Bit of a nutcase? Bye, yes. Bye. Thank you, Charlie. And we could do with a few more nutcases like him. You're a funny girl. Well, it is approval. Do I do anything wrong with my cash? So my well-publicized antiques provide a little innocent merriment. So what? You have rivals, Tommy who present a much more serious image to the public. I never believe making money had to be a grim, joyless sort of business. You'd get more respect from the media and everybody else if you didn't behave like an aging Peter Pan. Why, Mercy, that almost sounds as though you care. Stupid, isn't it? You know, you go past garage after garage, you'll say, I'll make it to the next one, and you never do. Funny world, isn't it? I'm Robert Shriving's business partner. Ah, uh, why haven't I heard from him this week? Uh, well, because he's been dead for about a week, that's why. Hello? Oh. How did he die? Well, there are various theories. Officially an accident. But nobody told me. 
They should have told me. Who? Who should have told you, Miss Tressida? Come on, please help me. All I want to know is who killed my partner and what the hell's going on? Hello? Hello? What do you think you're doing? How did you get into my office? How do you think? I wasn't going to hang about in the hall, was I? It's not on. What are you looking for in my desk? I found it. Don't worry. We'll see to it. Excuse me, sir. You live here, do you? Yes, what's happened? Something being mugged or something? Ah, if you could spare a moment, sir. Could you identify this person, sir? Sir? No. No, I've never seen him before in my life. 